And the rest of it was obviously shareholders. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Karl Aikahan. You know, what he does is, it's like buying a second hand, second hand car. You know, if you're trying to sell it, you probably get X amount of money. But if you turn it into small pieces and, and sell the, the tires separate and the brakes separate and the seats separate, they make more money. So he, he's a typical investor. So his, his, his idea was, if he can buy a fair enough, a large enough part of Dell, he will cut it up and he'll make money out of the deal. Uh, but fortunately, Michael has been able to buy back the entire company. So for example, I was a shareholder. They paid me my money. And uh, I'm not a shareholder anymore in Dell. And Michael owns it all. Now, why I wanted to talk about this particular thing is because last six months, there were a fair bit of rumors about what's going to happen to Dell. Uh, and I've been assuring customers, uh, <coughs> partners, colleagues, friends, that nothing is going to happen to Dell. Uh, the other, the other IT companies are not on half as strong a footing as we are, because no other company is owned and still managed by by the original founding member. So that's that's that that's a big big thing for us. So the direction that Michael set is going to stay. And the second point I want to clarify is that a lot of there, there is a lot of word in the market. PCs are dead and laptops are dead and tablets is the future and iPad will do and stuff like that. So I just want to clarify, you know, people have said that about oh, tapes, tape is dead. I can assure you tape is not dead. Uh, people said mainframes are dead. Uh, I can assure you they are, they are definitely not dead. So uh, what I was saying was, uh, just lower the volume, please. So what I was saying was that, so, my, uh, so Michael, uh, now that he owns the company, he's got a very clear vision. We, we are not going to stop selling laptops. We are not going to stop selling desktops. You know, that market was growing like this. Obviously, somebody's taken away a fair bit of, so it's come down, but it will not go back to zero. It will come down, it will stabilize at a good point. You know, just to give you a quick example, uh, my wife is a teacher and she still needs a laptop to do her schoolwork. You know, we, we have a bunch of all flavors of tablets at home. We are big gadget freaks. So my wife likes to watch the video on an iPad, but she does work on a laptop. Uh, my son has an Android and an iPhone and, and an iPad, but when it comes to doing his school projects, he still has to go fish out his laptop and work on that. The only difference that has happened is on, earlier we would probably buy a laptop on an average every alternate year. Now we just keep using the old ones till they die and then replace it. So maybe, you know, the number of laptops we buy and the money we, we spend in buying laptops is going to go down. But Michael's point of view is this. Uh, let's say, you know, this gentleman for a few minutes, let's assume he's from, from Seagate. And let's say he's from Intel. When I go to Seagate and I buy 10,000 hard drives, I get an X rate. But when I go to the same Seagate and I, and I buy a million hard drives, I get a Y rate. So he believes that, that we will not go out of end user computing business because we need that critical mass that we've built. We need the negotiation power with Intel, we need the negotiation power with Seagate, we need it with, uh, with every single vendor. And I'll give you a few, few other examples as I go forward, but the objective is we want to remain that very large company we have been. Yeah, PC market shrinks 10-15%, that doesn't mean it's going to close down. From, from let's say 50 million uh, units being sold in a year, it'll probably come down worst case to 39, 40 million, and it'll stabil stabilize there. But if, if somebody's selling 40 million PCs, and let's say Dell has to, continues to have 25% market, we're selling 10 million PCs, I'm buying 10, 10 million hard drives every year. I don't get to sell, sell 10 million servers, and I don't definitely sell 10, 10 million storage systems. But because of that volume, I will, I will continue to have a favorable pricing in the market, which means I will always continue to be competitive with my customers. So that's, that's the first thing I wanted to mention as a part of this session is that, that our foundation as a company is rock solid and stable. But what is important is the growth for Dell is, we, we obviously know the growth is not going to come from the PC business. And that is why Michael has spent a little over $10 billion buying uh, intellectual property. Uh, between two and a half to $3 billion out of that was invested only in storage. Okay, and Quest was how much? Two and a half? Yeah, two and a half. So that, those were the two big investments he made. Two and a half for buying storage software, a little more than two and a half because we, we, we bought a few other software companies over and above Quest. And then, then Michael spent about two and a half, three billion dollars 
uh, buying storage, com storage intellectual property. Uh, so let's quickly go back six years back. The first company Michael bought was a company called uh, Equalogic. And uh, there was a big debate that happened at that point in time. Uh, Michael went to the board of directors and he said, I want, to buy, I want to buy Equalogic. And the board said, we've never bought and acquired companies in the past, so we don't want to do that. And Michael has his own, ha uh, okay, he's liquidated that now, now that he's bought back Dell. But he had another finance company in which he had a few billion dollars lying. So he said, fine, Dell doesn't want to buy it. Michael Dell has enough money to go buy it on his own. So he was going to go there and buy Ecologic in any case. So that's when the board of members came back this and they said, okay, no, no, no. I think we will back you up and we will buy Ecologic. Ecologic was a company which used to do about 80, 85 million dollars business in a year. That's, that's what they used to do and it was break even. There was very little profit they used to make. Uh, from the point we bought it, in the next five years, it became a billion dollar business from us, for us. And from a break-even business, it became a solid 30% margin business for us. Very simple. I'll give an example. The hard disk that Ecologic used to buy and the same hard disk when we buy, we get it about 40% cheaper. So I passed 15-20% of the cost savings to our customers, so we actually lowered the prices of after we bought the company. And because we'd invested one and a half billion dollars, we had to recover our costs. We started making money on it. It's, it's happy. Everybody's happy. Customers are getting the same product cheaper. We're making more money. Everybody's happy. And, the, and it, was, it was such a popular product that business has grown um, 10 times in five years. 10 times. So the question is, what makes Ecologic so great? Uh, Ecologic has this unique thing. So let me ask this question. How many of you have bought large storage systems and deployed them in your careers in the last 15, 20 years. Okay, so, so what happens with the storage is it is like any other IT equipment you buy. You know, you start, okay, you start with X terabytes and then you scale it up, you add capacity. So let's say you bought it in 2008. 2010, you will buy upgrades. 2012, you will buy some more stuff. Come 2013, the vendor will come and say, you know, that, that little thing you have there, you know, it's, it's, it's about five, six years old. I can't support it anymore. So then you, you do what you do with every other equipment is the whole solution has to be forklift removed. You need to buy a brand new solution. You have to magically move data. And if you've ever migrated data from an old laptop to a new laptop, just multiply that problem a thousand times and you will know what the data center guys have to do. Okay. And there's, there's a simple reason why nobody actually comes and talks about this problem because this is not a problem. This is, this is the way to do it. When you replace an old laptop with a new laptop, you have to do this, right? You have to copy data. So this is not actually considered a problem till somebody comes and fixes it. So what Ecologic does is, is very simple. You bought this in 2008. Let's say this was 2 terabytes. You bought another one in 2010. Let's say this was 4 terabytes. You bought another one in 2012, 6 terabytes. But the best part about Ecologic is the whole thing doesn't get old. Come 2013, we'll tell you, I think this system is five years old. So two, four, six, you buy the new one, eight terabytes. You have eight terabytes of free space. Okay. So we, you just remove it. You go into that beautiful graphical console. You click a button called Array Evacuate. You do it on a normal working day on, on, come, come to the office on a Tuesday morning. Click that button. Okay. And then go home. Wednesday, Thursday, you just take out the Ethernet cables and take it out. And you just did that big forklift upgrade. So as I said, this wasn't really a problem till somebody came back and fixed it. Great value, unique value. I'm sure if any, any of you have ever done a storage migration project, uh, you will know how painful it is. This problem has by and large been solved on the server side because you can you know, virtually move uh, the, the virtual machines from an old server to a new server, but you still need a shared storage. <coughs> And no other storage is capable of moving like this. So that, that's why Ecologic did so well. It is simple. It has, you know, it's, it's so simple. You buy an Ecologic system. Every single capability you have listed, the software is included. So it was really simple, straightforward, very flexible. It's, it, it's been selling like hotcakes. So that, that's the first investment we did. The only li limitation we found out after we became a billion dollar business and a fairly large um, vendor of uh, Ecologic was uh, it, it uses a protocol called iSCSI. iSCSI doesn't work very well in Unix environments. And it, it's got nothing to do with iSCSI. The Unix guys give an iSCSI, put a, put a tick mark, yes, I have it. But when you start using it, it's not really very well designed, their version 
on their servers. It's not mission critical. You can't really run your business on it. So that's why we went out and we bought a second company called Compellent. Compellent has, has this unique value. You know, and let me ask you this question. How many of you have laptops with solid state drives? Okay. Uh, may I ask you why you don't have a solid state drive in your laptop? It's fast. It consumes less power. Why don't you have it? Because the solid state drive costs more than the laptop. It costs money. But here is the question. How big is the hard drive on your laptop? Half a terabyte? 500 GB? 300 GB? But do you change all 300 GB every day? You don't. You probably change a gig every day. So if I could give you a magical algorithm where you bought one gig of solid state drive and that's where you did all your read and write, wouldn't it be nice? Right? So that's what exactly what Compellent does. Compellent has everybody offers tiering. This is more expensive, you put expensive data here. This is less expensive, you put less expensive data here. But what equal what, what Compellent does is you don't have this concept. You put your data and the system will decide where it needs to put it. If it is old data which is not getting used, he will move it to a less expensive storage. You don't have to do anything. Nothing, nada. You turn it on, he does it. And let's say tomorrow this data becomes very important and there's a lot of I.O. happening. Let's say there's an audit that happens on five-year-old data. It will move here. It will come back to a fast storage. And you don't have to do anything. So that's the value why we bought Compellent. It, it was not tiering. That's, that's a big misconception in the market. It's the fact we can move data without you doing any work between tiers. It's called data progression. That's what we bought that company for. Doing ex extremely well, there are benefits of it. If I can use a three terabyte drives instead of a 600 GB drive to keep your old data, one drive replaces five of them. Less power, drives cost roughly the same, so one-fifth the number of drives. It's value for you. Total cost of ownership goes down because you've just saved a whole lot of money. And I can tear between solid state drives, I can tear between all kinds of, so I can do fairly fancy stuff on that, right? So, so the vision is that we as a company are very clear. We're going to invest in technologies which are dis disruptive. We are not going to do things the way the other vendors do in the market. We are, we are a key differentiator. We, we have a value that is different. So if you don't want it, I don't want to be on the table. I have, I, I have less expensive solutions and I think one of my slides that my colleague will show will talk about the whole picture, but that, that's where I am. So that brings me to the, to the agenda of today, which is data protection. I'm sure uh, uh, we all understand the problem associated with, 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 with data. How many of you ever had a data loss? Personal, business, critical. So I, I learned my mistake in my college days, my six months uh, final year project. And I was playing with a few viruses. I was writing code in those days to debug and remove sea brains and stuff like that. And one day, just wiped the, the four or five floppies I had with my data on them. And I just lost everything. Every single line of C, C that I had written for my college project was gone. Uh, and, and, and believe me, I, I think that data is cheap. If I lose my kid's photograph since the day he was born today, I will blow my head off. For me, that's my most precious, you know, uh, when I get old, I would want to sit down there and be able to see those pictures the day. My dad, you know, my dad has my pictures when I was small. So I, I, we all have personal valuable data. We all have uh, uh, business data to protect. And, and I think that's what we want to talk about today from, from a Dell perspective. I think this, this is a very, really nice graph. What it does is on the x-axis, there is a re recovery time objective, which is when a dis disaster happens, how much time does it take to bring your business back online? And on the left-hand side, there's a recovery point objective. When a disaster happens, how much data loss is acceptable to you? So if you want the data loss to be zero, your cost will go to infinity. Okay, and you want the re restoration to be instantaneous, it will go to infinity. So, so, th so there is a way to get it done cheaper, and there's a way to get it really expensive, and somewhere in the middle is where your sweet spot will be, which is this graph. So based on your budget, there will be a sweet spot where your price fits in. So the value that Dell brings to the table for data protection today is very simple. We have a whole lot of solutions, but we want to sit with you, understand your business problems, and then give you precisely the solution which, number one, meets your uptime, downtime requirements, and more importantly, it meets them within your budget. And being simple and easy, you know, those should be like, a done deal, you know, it can't happen without that. That's, that's the vision we have as a company. So moving on, uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, beautiful pictures like this. 
fairly complicated. Some of you have simple setups, maybe you have just one office to worry about. There are others who have multiple offices, you have branch offices, you have little offices, you have co-locations, then you have remote workers. So the whole picture needs to be managed and that's why you know one of the key things we want to talk to you about is if you have a little project, it's a good idea when I send my solution consultant over that you give him a, a, a rough idea of what the big picture looks like. I can solve this little problem to perfection but it is better if I keep the big picture in mind and not just perfection but I can also make it a part of what your two, three, four, five year roadmap is or what, what your last 10 years legacy is with you. I think that's important. So th this is what we want to do. We want, we want to help you save money. Data protection should not be more expensive than your production storage. I have seen backup and archival solutions which are actually more expensive than your primary production uh, systems. And, and I've always asked this fundamental question. Why will I pay more money for something that is a backup? Okay. I personally, you know, all, I was talking about my own personal data. What I do is it's it stored on, on a little hard drive at, at, at my house. I have another little hard drive in the office. Then I, I, I like to buy those uh, little DVD write, writable media. And once a year when I go home and I belong to Himachal, I just take two DVDs and drop it at my dad's place. I have a per perfect DR system. Okay, and my recovery point objective, unfortunately, is a year because till I go there the next year, it's, 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 it's still one site. But that, that is exactly what is important for you. You have to define your needs for us. So, so our data protection uh, point of view is clearly made of these five areas and I'll, I'll, rather than read the slide, I'll get into the specifics. So let's look at the first one. First is we, we want to align the data protection strategies to your business needs. There are vendors who can give you a solution which works everywhere. Okay. But here is my question to those vendors and we, we've been selling some of that solutions ourselves in the past. We're guilty of that crime. But, but, but my question always has been, if this is my database, this is the lifeline of my company, this is my ERP system, this is my manufacturing system, I can understand spending a whole lot of money to protect these. But why should I be buying the same thing to protect my print server? Why should I be using that to protect my domain server? You know, you have hundreds of domain servers, why should it be there in the first place? Why should I be using that to protect a server which is a place for the employees to dump a second copy of their data manually? You have one solution and you put it all over the place, it costs you money. And that's the, that's, that's, that's the first part of our vision. We should be able to optimize your expenses. So if you have a mission critical application, and, and I believe there's an industry statistic there, about 15% of these servers and, and data holding devices are really mission critical, that's where you should spend more money. Because they need a different level of protection. But then you should be able to move down to less expensive solutions and that's where Dell comes in. You know, I'm not a point player. You know, I like this English phrase, I'm not a one-trick pony. I'm not a horse that only dances like this. You know, I can do other tricks. So, so that's why we have, we have a complete range of solutions to offer and we can give you the right solution for this price point and I can give you a different solution that meets that business needs and, and, then do, and I, I can do it all the way for you. That's the first key point from our data protection strategy perspective. This, that, and and that, that, that's what we wanted to highlight. The second is... I think if you can reduce the size of data, life is easy. If you can reduce the data to one tenth, one fifteenth, your problem has suddenly become that small. So we have solutions which will help you dedupe your information, that will help you compress your information. A uh, couple of years we bought a company called Ocarina. With Ocarina we got a little over a hundred PhDs. And we got algorithms to literally compress and do custom dedupe of just about every kind of data set in the market. You know what our problem has been? We have so many algorithms, we ourselves don't know how to use them. So we've started launching products as of last year. Uh, there, are, there are a few models and few a la carte configs in the market. But going forward, I have so much intellectual property that I will be able to give you custom solutions over a period of time and they, they will get added to the products that I, I've already started selling in the market. So that's the second key point I want to talk about. And then space efficient snapshots. And let me, let me pause for a few seconds. How many people understand and use a snapshot? A snapshot. Excellent. So what's a snapshot? In the old days, you had a, da you had a data copy, you had a data set. You want another data set, you make another copy. That's the only way to do it. The good thing about a snapshot is you can come at 8 o'clock in the morning and take a snapshot. What a snapshot will do is all the changes that happen after 8 o'clock, those changes are stored somewhere else. So now you can go back to that 8 o'clock state or you can, you can use the latest one and then, you know, if you're really smart, you can have a snapshot every hour 
you can have a snapshot every week, you can have as many snapshots as you want because a snapshot unlike a backup doesn't take hours and it doesn't need to be stored somewhere else as long as you have spare capacity you can do it here. The problem with snapshots has been snapshots used to load storage systems. So every time you took a snapshot, the storage system slowed down by 2%. So if you took 50 or 100 snapshots, the storage system would start crawling. So one of the problems that we have fixed in the, these new solutions is, uh, in fact, I'll give you an example of one. So I was talking to a principal engineer. These are the final R&D guys who get to work on the solutions. And, he, and I asked him, we have a product called Compellent. And I asked him, how many snapshots? Because the problem with the spec sheet was it says unlimited. You know, my problem in life is I don't believe in the word unlimited. Everything has a limitation. It does, you hit it at some point in time. Right? So I asked him this question, uh, how many snapshots can you really take and store? So he said, you know what, I know of six or seven customers who are taking between 20 and 25,000 snapshots. So it's not a figure on a spec sheet. That, that one people are actually taking. I'll, I, so I just do your maths. Let's say you have 50 servers. And you do a snapshot, you take 10 snapshots every year, that's 500. Okay, then you store them for like 50 days. It's 20,000 is still a lot. It's a very, very large figure. Okay, but, that, but that's what the product does. And it, and it does not slow down. And, you know, maybe over, a, over dinner or a cup of coffee, I can talk about why it is so good. But the point is, this is the best data protection. If you have a snapshot taken every hour, let's say you have a virus, simple example, you think it happened somewhere on Monday, you can check a snapshot at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, the whole day and figure out when it happened. Let's say it happened at 11.15. You can go back to the 11 o'clock snapshot as close as possible. There are, there are competitors in the market who will do very, really good with snapshots, but they have an interesting problem. Today is, Thursday, today is Friday. Let's say you go back to Tuesday snapshot. Everything between Tuesday and Friday is deleted. So it's easy to say I do snapshots, but it's very hard to say I give you all snapshots available to you for read and write all the time. Very flexible, amazing piece of technology. This is the foundation of most mission critical data, uh, data protection strategies, and we have it. We have it across our platforms and everything we sell. So, so simple examples of things we've done to simplify our customers' lives. And then, of course, third is if you can standardize and consolidate, uh, and they, this is where me and my colleagues are going to differ. So I, I usually go and tell my, my customers, look, I'm your partner, and my belief is you should have a dual vendor strategy. You know, I think you should keep me honest. The other guy should ensure that he keeps me honest, but I should be there to ensure that, he, that I keep him, him honest. You know? I've had scenarios where customers would tell me, uh, you know, your quote is wrong. And I said, okay. And so my, what's wrong with my quote? You know, there's some disaster come. You know, this is a Friday evening. I'm trying to close a deal, you know, and, and, and I, I've gone home. And the, the CTO is a friend of mine. He says, mate, something is freaking wrong with Dell. Uh, so I turn up in his office on Monday morning and say, look, sir, I'm sorry if the price is wrong because I can get it checked. But I'm fairly certain that we really discounted it crazy. He said, no, 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 that's not the problem. The problem is there seems to be a zero missing in your quote. So if I've, I've quoted $25,000, he was, he was expecting something in a few hundred thousand dollars range not $20,000. He was expecting something, a couple of lakh of dollars. He said, there's a, there's a zero missing in your quote. That told me the kind of money he was paying for a similar class solution from, a, from one of my competitors. I once met a customer in, in Melbourne and it was an amazing experience because he didn't want to buy from Dell. And I didn't want to sell any stuff, but I like universities in general. And I've been trying to find some good places to send my son to over a period of time. So I usually maintain very good relationship with all kinds of institutions all over the world. So I was still adamant, I want to have a cup of coffee with you, understand what is good, bad, ugly. And then he said, let me walk you through my data center. So we walked around his data center. I saw beautiful purple and blue boxes of tape libraries. And we came out and I generally asked him, eh, by the way, uh, those tape libraries look a little old to me. So who maintains them? He said, no, vendor XYZ maintains them. And I said, and... And you know what, I'm actually, I, good you reminded me because I have to pay $65,000, dollars uh, next month for the next year's maintenance. And I was wondering, he pays $65,000 for the maintenance of something that I can give, replace it with something brand new. His, his stuff was six years old. I can replace it with something brand new, four times the speed, eight times the capacity, with three years on-site, 24 by 7 warranty <coughs> thrown in, in that same one-year maintenance contract price. The other vendor has no reason to give to, to not do that, right? He's, it, it is all pure cash for him. It's, it's old equipment lying there and customer is paying a whole lot of money for it. 
So, so that's the point. We, we want to ensure that we have no legacy. We have no reason to protect something called which is an old profit base. So getting usually Dell into the organization is, is usually bad news because we try to talk stuff which, is, which the other vendors will simply come and contradict at times. That's where I think another key value comes when, when we become one of your partners. And then the next one that I want to talk about is this. You know, it, this is where the big picture comes in. The big picture is not about a point problem with a point solution. The big, big picture is you have a business environment. I, there, are, there are scenarios when my ecologic solution is amazing and we don't quote it. The reason is very simple. They have a networking team. The moment you quote ecologic, it has to connect to an ethernet switch. And the storage guy loses his control because the ethernet switch is managed by the networking team. And they, they refuse to do things your way. So, 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 and I have seen multi. I have seen some very large organization where the internal politics are so hard to manage that I should be in a position to offer you. A, so, so that's the objective. You know, the solutions we offer should align with your people needs. They should align with your business needs. I, I'm not here to change my customers' work environment. I'm, I'm here to complement it. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you. You know, my personal point of view is if I if I come in and and meet our customers, one, we want to be your partners. I'm happy not doing a business, enjoying a cup of coffee with you and meet you another six months time, then sell you some crap shit and never show up. It, that doesn't work for us. And incidentally, if that has happened to you, we can have a side little conversation and give me the guy's name. So those, those five things are the key foundation of our, our strategy from a data protection perspective. So this is exactly what we want to do. One, we want to help cut your risk. We want to help save your time. And we want, you, want to help you slash costs. Slash costs by not buying cheap stuff. Slash costs by buying a newer, uh, a different class solution which, which is designed for the next 10 years of workloads. And not something which was designed what we've done in the last 20 years and carry the legacy baggage with you. That's, that, that is exactly the strategy that we have as an organization when it comes to building your environments. You know what, I'll actually pause and I'll, I'll, I'll ask... Uh, my good friend here to just spend two minutes on this slide. We'll, int I'll, we'll introduce him later, but. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks, thanks, Aramit. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's always tough to follow up this guy, I think. He's... So, but uh, I'll sort of uh, spend a few minutes on this slide. This slide was, was actually meant to be crowded. Uh, it was not meant to be made clean or sort of Sh simple. Should I add some more trash yeah, to it? Yeah, I think I should, you should add more trash to it. I think this, this slide was meant to show the sort of the range of solutions that we have to sort of provide you a complete end-to-end -end data protection. And it spans across hardware, software, services. So that's the entire objective of this slide is. So if you look from a basic replication from your DC to DR onto a uh, tape backup, in between you have CDP, which is a real-time data protection, onto snapshotting, everything you have. So depending on what your organization needs are, depending on what sort of data you are generating, Depending on what your data classification is, depending on what the RTO and RPO requirements are for each set of data, we have a solution for it. And the good thing is, all the solutions are integrated. Though it's, though it's by, by sort of acquired through acquisitions of Dell, but Dell has done a great job of integrating everything. So it doesn't operate in silos. So every piece of software talks to the every piece of hardware, and every piece of hardware talks to every piece of software. And the good thing is that you have a sort of a unified layer to manage the entire infrastructure. So that's the reason why this slide is up. And, and that's, that, that yeah. actually sort of summarizes what do we do from a data protection perspective. Yeah. Right. And Thanks. that brings me back to the original point. You know, we are not really very well known to be a storage company, though I am the number one market leader in the iSCSI market by far. My next competitor is less than half my market share. I'm not even very well known as a data protection company. But the fact is, we have so much of our own intellectual property. You know, I've mentioned names like Compellent, Ecologic, and obviously my colleague is going to come and talk about things like Appashore and Quest, but we have so much intellectual property. And then on top of that, we have these capabilities. With, with this, I can do synchronous replication, and I can do it the way you want it. I can do Delhi to Bombay Sync. I can do uh, 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 Bombay to Singapore Async. I can do Bombay to Hong Kong halfway, you know, CDP. You, you tell me what permutations you like. I, I can do round robin, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, back to A. I can give you almost any kind of high availability at the highest end, and I can go down all the way down, and I'm happy to sell tape libraries. I, I don't, I, we don't subscribe to the fact that tape is dead. 
I meet so many customers who love the fact that on a 6,000 rupee tape drive, tape media, you can put a terabyte of data, put it into your pocket, take it home and put it into the vault, encrypt it, it's safe. You lose it, nobody can take it. I know small businesses who do it. Small businesses are not small businesses, the likes of Bajaj do it. Okay, they're, they're small in terms of the MNC language of how many billions of dollars, but from a, from a volume and size perspective, they're very large companies and perfectly safe. So we have the entire gamut of solutions and this is, this is purely the data protection portfolio that we offer to our customers today. So we have a few customer quotes, but I'll skip that in the interest of time. And uh, the message that I want to do, uh, mention before, before I switch over to my good friend here is, you know, we actually want to be your partners. I'm not here to sell you anything at all. The objective of today's session is, is to give you a bird's eye view of what Dell is. Uh, the second objective is, is to give you a little bit of a specific deep dive beyond those great laptops and the great servers we make into the new stuff that we've invested a whole lot of money in. We are incidentally the last quarter we were the largest x86 server vendor in, in Asia Pacific and Japan. So we are, we are very well established as a server vendor. Uh, the next uh, big bastion we want to break and we want your help and we want to help you solve your business challenges is to ensure that we give you the right storage solution and our stuff doesn't have legacy baggage. We don't have technology which was developed 25 years ago that we've given a beautiful new marketing name to and really large airport banners and I'm trying to resell it to you. We, we don't have anything like that. Uh, thank you so much and Kumar, it's, it's all yours.